This is me about to perform on stage at one of London's most respected comedy nights. <laughs> Alongside some of the most famous comedians in the country, but all my jokes have been written by seven-year-olds. You have a smelly jumper. <laughs> <laughs> and it's safe to say, it was a tough gig. I think that's as low as it gets. But why am I putting myself through this? Well, a couple of years ago, I toured my first ever stand-up show around the country. Hello, London Palladium! This year, I'm going back on tour, and I'm feeling a bit nervous about it. So I reached out to brilliant stand-up comic and good friend Ian Sterling to help me get over my nerves. Little did I know that what Ian had in store for me was going to be one of the most terrifying nights of my life. No, no. I'm getting back on stage after two years, and I'm worried about it. So I've come to the house of comic legend, Voice of Love Island. The Islanders are comparing themselves to animals. An all-round funny man, Ian Sterling. You leave tomorrow, don't you? I start the show tomorrow, yeah. yeah. Where can people get tickets? Oh, www. Ian could see I was bricking it, so he tried to ease my nerves with some horror stories of his own. And he goes to introduce me, but he forgets my name. So he just goes, welcome to the stage, a boy. <laughs> They start chanting, F the boy, F the boy. You know, it can't get any worse than this. That gets rid of your fear instantly. Getting rid of my fear? Now that sounds like something I could do with. I suppose there would be like a shortcut where you just do something that's like an absolutely terrible idea on stage. Then a normal gig would seem like easy, right? Would you be able to do that for me? I've got, I've got something in mind. <laughs> just do as I say and you'll never worry about doing stand-up comedy again in your entire life. Thanks, Ian. Although I wasn't thanking him a few days later. Ian's got me a gig in a couple of days, and he sent me an address where he said... He said I was going to get some help from some writers, which I didn't know that's what we were doing, but I mean, we can, we can do that nonetheless. But there is a distinct reason why I'm not showing you where the address is, because the address is a school. Why has he sent me to a school? This required some serious explanation. Okay. Mr. Sterling, why am I outside of school? Because I just thought, do you know, do you know who's funny? Kids. No, kids are funny to other kids. I think kids are hilarious, man. So these are my writers? A bunch of kids, yeah. This is completely out of your comfort zone. This isn't the sort of environment you're normally in. And this is what's going to push you to be the best comic you can be. People in London love this sort of thing. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, I did ask him get me a difficult gig. Right, let's lead a writer's room with children. I guess Ian was right, and so I decided to make the most of this situation. And hey, if I can perform stand-up comedy with material written by seven-year-olds, anything's possible. So I decided to welcome my new collaborators into the writing room. Nice to meet you. Fantastic, come on in. And we had just one hour to come up with comedy gold. How are we all doing tonight, London? Good. My name is Max, and in a week's time, I'm going to be performing stand-up comedy in a big comedy club in London. I am going to need your help today to come up with the funniest things that we can think of. To start with, I thought I'd establish a comedy baseline for the group and ask them for their favourite jokes. Plagiarism is a big thing in the comedy industry, so just make 100% sure these are your jokes. These are your jokes? Yes. Yes, okay, fantastic. What's the joke? What do you call when a tooth that's covered in sugar? I'm not sure. Hit me with a punchline. A sweet tooth. Good. Knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? And I need to cry. <laughs> For me, it was the delivery then. My joke about when I a Hindu joke. A Hindu joke, okay. I'm not sure I could be making those kinds of jokes. I could see some potential with this gang, so I thought we'd start with the opening joke of the set. In a comedy set, it was all about making a good first impression. So, what are the first things that you think when you see me? You have a Jumper. I've got some early jumper. You got the same jumper. As Classy guys. Do you dress yourself? Yeah. No. <laughs> You've been the richest person in the world for seven minutes. So rich, Daddy will be very happy. You've got green shoes. I've got green shoes. It probably would only work if I was wearing green shoes on the night. Uh, famous. Famous. <laughs> amongst a very small population in the home counties. With first impressions out the way, it was time to get their opinion on some classic comedy subjects. What's your opinion on this? This is airline food. It looks like my breakfast is funny. Did you fly to school with Qantas? What's our opinions on this gentleman? <laughs> Boy, 
Boris Johnson. He looks very funny and smart. 50% right. We were getting some okay stuff from our comedy subjects. Maybe I was being too restrictive with the parameters of the comedy, and so I just thought I'd open the floodgates, get some blue sky thinking going, and see what they found funny. What makes you laugh? When my dad took on me in my arm, it's in, in my bed. Dad, armpit, bed, fantastic. Who do you call when lemon turtle? I don't know. A lemonade. <laughs> yes, love that. I was trying to talk to my friend Ava and her sister. You were saying, play schools, play schools, play schools, play schools, play schools, play schools a lot. Play schools? Yeah. Right. Knock, knock. Who's that? Mikey. Mikey who? Help me, I'm stuck in the hole. <laughs> That is really funny. First thing with comedy chops in it. We were getting into the groove and I'd unlocked the kids' funny bones. After a few more gags, I had enough for a set. I put it together, did a bit of rehearsing. Who do you call for lemon gets hurt? Lemonade. And before I knew it, the night of the performance had arrived and I was bricking it. The comedy club is around the corner. This is probably the most uncomfortable I've ever been. It's just such a comedy crowd. I feel so sick. <laughs> Ian had got me a spot at Always Be Comedy, one of London's most prestigious comedy nights. A place that's known for hosting some of the most famous comics in the UK. I was, of course, absolutely terrified. Across the road is, is a date with destiny. But this gig is also known for having the friendliest crowds in London. So if my seven-year-old's jokes would go down well anywhere, it would be here. Oh my. It's basically live at the Apollo to do this tonight. <laughs> Why? Because it's, um, I didn't realize it was Woody coming. Josh Woody came. Yeah, I was on before you. <laughs> I'm not, not joking. Ian had just dropped a bombshell. One of my all-time comedy heroes, Josh Widdicombe, would be performing a set directly before mine. And so now this gig was not only going to be incredibly embarrassing, but also had the potential to destroy my comedy reputation forever. I'm just really pissed off at Ian. Some of the best comedians in the country are also on the same bill. Are you worried about looking silly? I'm about to go on stage and go, did you hear about the dog who jumped into the water? He was a hot dog. I tried best to calm my nerves, but showtime had arrived. The comedy's gonna start in less than a minute. Are you ready? And there was no getting out of it now. As I paced backstage, the show started. How are you guys doing? You good? Yeah. It was a classic always be comedy night. Great jokes and a great audience all enjoying themselves. Someone who wasn't enjoying themselves was me backstage. I was just trying to cram in my final bits of preparation. Why did the chicken cross the road? But I had to remember that I was doing this for a reason. Hello. This would make me a better comedian. All <laughs> uh, right, here we go, let's do this. Are we ready? <laughs> it's Max Ford! <laughs> Know what you're thinking? <laughs> Smelly jumper. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name's Max Foss. For those who don't know me, uh, I'm rich. Famous. Uh, I'm famous. Got and I've got green shoes. <laughs> what do you call uh, a melon that jumps in the water? Watermelon. With the opening jokes not hitting quite like they did in the classroom, it was time to get political. Uh, Boris Johnson! He's got the hair, he's always so grumpy, he's got that big blazer. And what a businessman. Hmm, it seems that the kids' political observations weren't as astute as I first thought. So time to bring out the big guns. Pretty cool, uh, if a lemon gets hurt. Lemonade. Nope. No love for prop comedy either. Let's hope that Winnie's knock-knock joke cracks the audience up as much as it did me. Knock-knock. <laughs> Mikey. <laughs> Help me, I'm stuck in the hole. How about Alexia's? Knock-knock. Who's there? Knock-knock. Who's there? Knock-knock. 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 <laughs> Let me in already! <laughs> Dad, Tom, it's Ben, fantastic. So this next fixer, you've got to imagine that you're at home, in bed, tucked up, and I'm your dad. Now at this moment, as I reach forward to tickle an audience member in front of my comedy heroes because a seven-year-old told me it was funny, it's extremely difficult to express just how embarrassing this experience was for me. 
You guys have been amazing. I hadn't, but I think I'd inflicted enough pain on these lovely, lovely people for one evening, so I thought I'd wrap it up. One last story. So I was in the playgrounds with my friend Ava. I kept on saying, play schools, play schools, play schools, play schools, play schools, get the hands up, play schools, play schools, play schools, play schools. Thank you very much for being back thank you very much, appreciate it. Cheers. I'd done it. I'd done the most embarrassing gig I'd ever have to do in my life. And I'd survived. All that was left to do was for Ian to give the audience what they'd actually come for. It's Ian Sterling! Funny jokes. <laughs> but after his set, I was able to confront the man behind it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it went as well as we could have expected, right? That was pretty When you kept us in knock knock at that person, I was like, this guy's lost his mind. I don't know exactly what you're meant to do. You want to get inside your comfort zone and you absolutely did it. Can I have a deep? Not in a million years. <laughs>